that I, I i wanted to bring up was um your your national team can get stronger and more experienced when you play friendlies against other equally as good or even better countries so in europe you know everything's very constricted and very close to each other so these countries can play friendlies against each other all the time you know if they wanted to mm. in asia you know, if you're a Japan or South Korea and you want to play someone better than you, then you're probably going to Europe somehow or you're inviting them to Europe or to South Korea or Japan. You know, it's a little more difficult because like like who are you going to play that's in your proximity to those two countries? China, you'll right. spank them. Mongolia, it's a logistical nightmare. Mongolia, they don't even have a fucking team. You know, yeah. Russia, that's, uh, you know, you that could that. Maybe, maybe be equal, but... I would say that both of those teams would probably win. You know, it, it would probably be a 75% chance of those Asian teams winning against Russia. Mm -hmm. Or are they going to go play Laos, Thailand? That's 10 nil right there, yeah. you know? So I, and it would be interesting to see, and we don't have to get into it, but maybe these teams from the East should play some of the teams from North America. They're not that far away. Yeah, that's what I was going to say makes more sense. And I don't, it was probably two years ago. I think I've told you about this before. Mexico went over to Asia mm -hmm. and they played Japan and South Korea and they won both games. And, but I was like, I didn't, I didn't really care about the result. I was just like, thank God. Thank fucking God. Mexico is not doing a friendly against Guatemala and Trinidad. Like they, you need to pick better teams. And I'm, and you're going up against the two best Asian teams yeah. outside of Saudi Arabia, maybe. So I was like, hey, this is a great, friendly uh, international window. And I think maybe next time if Japan comes over, like a Japan-US friendly, that'd be a good game. I really think oh, it'd that'd be, be a good sweet. Game. That'd be sweet. They played in LA or some shit. Oh, that'd be sold out. Yeah, dude. Have, have Korea come over here, play Canada and the US. Have Japan go down and play like Ecuador and Colombia. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're right. Like fire... What was this? If it's not fire makes fire, that's not the goddamn expression. Iron trial sharpens fire. iron. Oh yeah. Or trial by fire. I think I'm combining the two into one saying. I think it's exactly right. If England wants to go play Italy for a friendly, it's just a phone call and a bus ride, you know. And if Japan wants to play anybody that's not Thailand, then they got to travel across a fucking ocean. So that's definitely a valid point. I think it's also like the state of the club, the club football at a lot of these countries. Just everybody, if you show promise, you just go to Europe. Right. And so I think it really hurts the investment in the grassroots in these countries because there's no feeder system to get, you know, young Japanese kids into the J League, really, because there's, that's not where the money is. The money is like the second some kid looks good, you sell them to the Bundesliga. Yeah. That's where the money is. And so it kind of sucks to see, but like, but that's, that's how globalism has affected soccer. I mean, that's that's reality. You know, you see that in every league that's not top five. Yeah. You know, even, even the yeah. top five leagues trade trade with each other. They all trade towards the Premier League. Yeah. In, I'm about to say in some in some form or fashion that, that that's always the end goal because that's where the money is. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's where you get paid for just appearing on the sideline, you know, with your shirt. You know, you wouldn't have to fucking play. Yeah. So and I don't shit, I don't think there's a solution to that other than you know, in order to have a good national team, you got to have a good domestic intake and you you have to have some semi-decent, you know, domestic leagues. But I don't think you necessarily need to have you need to try to emulate the European leagues or the Premier League. Dude, I think there's so many possible solutions. And uh, I don't even know what direction to start with. Like, do you need to start keeping your best players if you're Senegal? Do you need to keep them in Senegal or at least in Africa? I don't know. See, I, mean, I don't think so. You know, I would argue no. Because you think they how, need to go play with the best. Yeah, because how far can the Senegal, the Senegalese domestic league take them in terms of not even in terms of competition, but in terms of coaching, training facilities, shit, girls, you know? 
you know, these players factor that stuff in or like what cities they're in, you know, what kind of food that they're going to get. That makes, no, I hear you, but I think, think about it. If the continent of Africa took their talent back, that would really hurt the Prem. That would. And it would really hurt France, Spain. I mean, I feel like Germany probably has like the least amount of African players. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just, you know, from memory. Um, and they all go back to Cameroon, Ghana, Nigeria, mm-hmm. Senegal. And now the African Champions League is fucking stacked. I just don't think that they would be at the skill level that they are now. Now, if they if they went to Europe and then went back, that's a different story. If they had stayed fully in Africa the whole time, you know, I don't think we would ever say the the name Kulabali, you know. Like I think he would be just some local legend in Africa. You know, he would not be a a world renowned uh player right. or you know, if he if, if right. he stayed in Senegal, you know, he would just be a good right African goalkeeper where, you know, historically they're all dog shit. So and, and I think that's the other side of the problem is it's not just the developmental side of the J League or of the Senegalese Premier League or whatever it's called. I don't I couldn't tell you the name of one single African league. I really couldn't. It's also the TV rights and it's also attention and clout. How do you get like I wonder, right, if Asia took their talent back. South America. Dude, if, if fucking Brazil recalled all their players, they'd have one of the probably best league in the world. Yeah. The English Premier League would be shit compared to the to Brazilian league. It just would be. And so, but then even if that happens, how do you get people to start giving a shit about the Brazilian league? How do you get giant brands like Nike wanting to sponsor the league? How do you get people on tiktok talking non-stop about boca versus river like how do you make that happen because that's where the money comes from it's not just having mm-hmm. the players it's also the money you yeah. know because i'm sure there's there is talent in the j league and the k league but if there's no international fan base which there really isn't there's no money and they yeah. can't reinvest that into their youth programs because there's no fucking money from the tv deals because only koreans care about the k league and half of korea doesn't give a shit about the K-League because they're watching the Prem. They're watching Tottenham because that's where Son plays. You know what I mean? So there's like it's like developmental factors, financial, political factors, you know, like work visas and all this other shit. It's We probably need a six-hour episode if you really want to get into like how to break down European hegemony in football. Yeah. And, and <laughs> it started I mean, off I, as like a World Cup preview. And now it's like... Yeah, no, we're diving into deep shit right now. I uh, know. It's like how do we re we need how do we redraw the trade agreement between Cameroon and Spain to yeah, yeah it's just like <laughs> Oh god. Um any, any closing remarks that you have? I think this is we've touched on something good here and I think if we get Connor in for a conversation about this further cuz he can talk to the Argentine league a little bit more then I, you know, I think we might have a gem here. Um, you guys let us know if that's, if that's something that you would like a more extended conversation about.